Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor. So next out of the Rigid Ink sample bag is a, some PVA, the Water Soluble Filament. Oh, I'm super excited to tell you about my adventures printing with this. It's all gone now. In fact, I don't even have any of it in the house because not only did I print it all and use it all for prints, but now it's all washed away and used for really cool things. So let's go through the, my adventures with PVA and talk about that. So yeah, I used PVA and I used up the entire sample that they sent me of PVA. I had a lot of fun printing with this stuff. Now, you'll notice I, I'm reusing an old roll of filament that I have and I, I've taped a couple of desiccant packets on the inside of it because PVA is, of course, water soluble. Now, I wasn't super crazy about uh, making sure that I'm keeping it safe and putting an enclosure around my plastic and making sure because I don't I don't have to worry about that very much where I here. Let me let me show you. Well, I forgot my camera stand, so we're going to have to do this one selfie style. But yeah, I live in the middle of the Great American Desert. This place ain't known for its humidity. Yeah, we dehydrate fruit out here by just leaving a window open. That might be a slight exaggeration, but you get the general idea. Yeah, that's right on my back door. I, I really don't have to worry too much about the water, but this stuff is water absorbing and it's, it's super hard to work with because of that. When it prints, it sounds a lot like Rice Krispies. You can just hear the water molecules in it uh, vaporizing. The other thing about it, well, so the first thing that I printed was this, a, a, a Doctor Who and Whimsical TARDIS from my TARDIS run board game. Uh, and I printed the two of them because I wanted to test the stringiness of this stuff. And its stringiness was super surprising. I turned up the retraction way high on this. I tried to pull it as far back into the nozzle as I can. And I never saw stringiness like, like I would see with Pet G. Uh, it, it was... I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it was, it didn't string as much as it broke off and then oozed out. And then by the time it finished traveling, there was a little hair of ooze, but it wasn't, it wasn't a pointy hair. It was a flat end hair. It was the most cylindrical hair I've ever seen. This stuff is, is almost anti-stringy. It, it snaps and stretches. It's the stretchiest filament I've ever used when it's hot. So if I ran this thing through the grading matrix, it doesn't get a very high score. But of course, this stuff isn't about being able to make good prints with it. It's not a general purpose. It has a very specific purpose, a very specific thing that it does that makes it valuable. So I took that 3D printed TARDIS, 3D printed Doctor Who, and of course, let's see them dematerialize. And it, uh, it took almost 24 hours for it to wash away. And the other thing was at the bottom of this cup, it had, uh, I'm not quite sure, a sludge at the bottom of it. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, it didn't entirely dissolve. Now with my other uh, prints, I changed the water frequently. And so I washed away whatever that was. I didn't let it get to its, its uh, 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 what's it called when, when water can't absorb anything more of it. I don't know, there's there's a chemistry point for that and I should look it up and somebody's going to correct me in the comments, so thank you for helping me remember that. Um, but, yeah, it just kind of turned into a slug, but it did dissolve away, and so that was very cool. <laughs> Mission accomplished there. So, I, I hope it goes without saying that you shouldn't drink the water that you dissolve this stuff in. I'm not sure what polyvinyl alcohol is, but I don't think you should put it in your body. Just wash this water away, dispose of it properly. Don't accidentally drink the water that you dissolve your prints in. So my next task, of course, was to use this as support material for doing a print. And the print, the, the model that I came up with was this, essentially just two balls stacked on top of each other, which I printed vertically. The idea was that I would print some PVA until I got to the part, then the part would print to it, then it would print more PVA above it so that the upper ball could be supported. The idea was I was trying to see if material stuck to PVA and if the PVA stuck to the material in turn. And the result was not perfect. 
So these are the results of my first ABS prints with it. And this one I didn't let get very far because it, it for some reason didn't stick at the very bottom. And I was thinking, great, it doesn't stick to ABS. But this second one, it did stick on the bottom, but where the support stopped and it started going back into open air, the print got actually really bad in quality. I'm not quite sure what was happening here, but then I stopped it because once it got up to here, it was clear that the PVA was not sticking to the ABS at all. Now I think what happened was that the ooze wall that I put in here, because I was doing this with dual extrusion printing the same as I would if I were doing it with two colors of the same material, I used Simplified 3D and it put an ooze wall around here, which I thought, yeah, this stuff definitely needs an ooze wall. But unfortunately that ooze wall didn't quite stick to itself, it fell apart. And so I think what we're seeing here, the bad prints that we're seeing here, is the ooze wall sticking to itself. And so it just, it was a very hard thing to work with. And the ABS, again, the PVA didn't stick to the ABS. Once the PVA started getting back into the print, the print quality just was going down the tube. So I canceled this print and said, well, let's see, let's see what PLA does. And the PLA print was also super interesting. Now, you'll notice that the two balls are not together. They fell apart because, so, uh, uh, is this the, no, there's the bottom. So this is the way it printed. This bottom part went up, and where this bottom part was supported looks beautiful. Uh, again, we've got a little bit of ugliness where it stopped being PVA printed, and I think that, again, that was the ooze wall. I tried to strengthen the ooze wall this time by doing two shells, but I think that we still got a little bit of problem with it. But then it's fine while it's printing into the open air, but then when it got to the part where the PVA was supposed to stick to it, oh, it went really bad again. That PVA just messed up the print, and it caused the junction of these two prints to absolutely fall apart to the point where that small connector just broke. However, once we got past that point and we were printing the top, the top printed beautifully. So I'm not quite sure what to think about this. I, I think what this definitely shows is that ABS and PLA will stick to PVA, but PVA won't stick to ABS or PLA. So we can use PVA as a support material provided we're doing it up from the build plate because it sticks to the build plate just fine and then the material sticks to it but it won't stick to the material so we can't use it for stacking on top of another build which is less useful than I would like but it's it's better than nothing I suppose but after I looked at the ABS and after I realized that where it was covered by the PVA is actually pretty good, maybe what I needed to do was cover the entire print in like a shell of PVA. So I created a new support structure for it, covered the entire shell in PVA, and here's what that one did. Again, the print broke apart. But before it broke apart, and that's a really small interface area, so maybe that was my mistake. I should maybe make that a bit stronger. But before it broke apart, the print overall looks pretty good. And because the PVA was connected to itself, even the top ball managed to work okay. However, the layers, all the layers here, all of the outside layers look like they didn't bond properly. Where the PVA was adjacent to the ABS, the ABS just... I can literally see between these layers and stick my fingernail between them and scratch them apart. It's the weirdest thing. It simultaneously allows me to gr make great support structures and not. Now, I'm not saying that PVA is bad. In fact, I really think that this stuff has some great promise to it, but I'm not quite sure what to make of these results. So the last print that I did, I decided to do the Hilbert Cube by Tony Buser on Thingiverse. And can I just say, I love removing this oozebane wall. It's like cracking, cracking open the creme brulee. It's like opening Christmas. In fact, I've still got the uh, ooze wall from this one. Look at how cool that is. It's a mess, but it was cool to remove that and see the print underneath it. Now this particular print was kind of designed to be done with a dissolvable support material because there's no way with breakaway supports that you're going to be able to get into this thing and clear it all out. And there are parts of this where the dissolvable material needs to be able to not stick to the material below it. And like I already determined, it wasn't going to do that and it didn't. 
I could see very clearly that it, that it didn't, but it had enough layers and enough time to correct itself by the time it got there. So I took it and threw it into dissolvable material, and it took two days to dissolve it away, changing the water frequently, but here it is, and it dissolved away. There's a lot of a lot of faces on this. It's not a clean print by any means, but it's a print that couldn't have happened any other way. It's super cool. Now, for some reason, the base of this is really messy. I need to clean. I need to just clean this thing up. PVA. It it allows the printing of impossible things, but it's not perfect. It's it's a difficult thing to to work with. It doesn't allow for for high detail. I'm trying to do some high detail prints with it, but I've run out of PVA, and I'm going to get some more. And I will say that I love how Rigid Ink sells it in small amounts because the thing about PVA is you can't store it in the open air for a long time, even here in the middle of the Great American Desert like I am. So instead of buying a whole roll of it and going, man, I need to use it up before it dies or I need to store it properly or I need to worry about it. I'll just leave these smaller rolls in the packages and I'll just buy the smaller rolls of PVA and use them in smaller increments and I won't worry about it as much. So I really like that and I'm, I'm really happy that I found a supplier of PVA who sells it in such a small amount that I, that I don't need to worry, that I can start experimenting with PVA. So thank you again very much to my friends at Rigid Ink for getting me this filament. And thank you guys very much for watching. And until I see you next time, remember, safety first. Go out there and do something awesome, because I know you can. Oh, uh, today's tie is VeggieTales because I do like to waltz with potatoes up and down the produce aisle.